So, this one's gonna be about time, and it is also going to be about less. But yeah, as always, more after the intro. To just somehow make it a little bit like uh, interesting and or something, I don't forget. <laughs> But with that being said, hello, welcome back. Thanks for episodes of Self Development with Tactics podcast. And I just sounded like Arnold Schwarzenegger right there. But yeah, um, as I said before, and um, by the way, if you want to listen to this, you know, if you're just viewing this YouTube video and you actually want to listen to this just because it might be more efficient for you, just because it might be even more effective for you, then please check out the links in the description because there should also be the link to the podcast and or to a page where you can also then choose which platform you would be like King to just listen on or something, I don't know, which might be Apple Podcast, which might be Google Podcast, which might be Spotify, which might be Stitcher, which might be CastBox, which might be Radio Republic. There are so many different platforms and there's hopefully also going to be the platform where you are often and or where you are just listening to your podcasts on and or the podcasts that you are regularly listening to. If you're listening to some podcasts, if you actually haven't listened to some podcasts yet up to this point, then I would highly suggest you to start with it and to, to maybe even kind of take music, get it out of your life and then just put podcasts into it. Just because podcasts at my point of view, and I know people, you know, I know people that really need music and I can understand that. It is really nice and I do not really want to take something off of you or from you that you really need. You know, it's just an idea. It's just something to, to give you, but you can take it and or not. But the thing is, by listening to podcasts, by just having podcasts around, you're just really able to gain a lot of knowledge. You're really able to gain a lot of information, a lot of insights in a, and a lot of inspiration, especially, and also motivation. You know, it, it always depends, of course, on what you're listening to. And there's also going to be a lot of entertainment, hopefully. And hopefully it's also the case for my fucking podcast, but I'm not quite sure about that sometimes. But yeah, um, as I said before, this one's going to be about less and it's also going to be about time and i i'm willing to start with time and then we're actually going through an article by the senhabits.net site about less essentially and i do have to say that less is actually a pretty good word to describe their website and or the website that i'm just seeing here in the background because there's really not a lot on there you know there's just a few paragraphs and that's quite it but time time is something that we all are conscious about and the thing is we all seem to care way more about the time that we're spending spending on something and being efficient with the time that we are spending on something at, at this point of time. Maybe this is just something that I have seen with myself and this is something that I have recognized with myself, but I've also heard other people talking about that. And this is one of the reasons why I believe that voice is something that's particularly important. You know, those voice devices, the devices that you can control via voice. I do believe that this is actually a part of the future. I don't necessarily know if this is going to be the future, like it's only going to be that and, and whatnot, but I definitely think that it is going to be a part of the future since a lot of companies like Apple and, and whatnot are really just trying to get you to use them, you know, to also use their voice assistants like Siri and or uh, just Amazon also, and they have been doing it for years. Like I think they have started in 2014 with the first Alexa Echo, I guess. I'm, I'm not quite sure about that. I never ever know that. But um, they really started early with those things. And the thing with Amazon is that they always, at, my, at least at my point of view, they've always just seen the trends, which is amazing. I don't know how they're doing it. I don't know which people that they're having. They're probably having quite good people, I guess, you know, just also because of their consumer centricism that they have in their company, which, which is amazing, which is amazing that they are able to do so much for their consumers. It is just insane, you know, and for me, there's actually kind of no reason to just not believe in Amazon in terms of its growth in the future and also that uh, they actually have been able to just do what they have been able to do, you know, just being one of the biggest companies in the fucking world and, and those things because they really know how to serve the people and they really know how to produce things for people. And this is also one of the reasons why I am having a podcast and why I believe in podcasts. And maybe this is also one of the reasons why podcasts have grown over the past maybe year, two years, something like that, maybe even a little bit longer, definitely. Why they have grown so much? Because people are really conscious about how they choose and how they use their time. 
And listening to a podcast is really time efficient since you can just be in the train, which is something that I'm always doing, you know, when I'm commuting to just the school that I'm attending at this point of time, and then I'm just in the bus, I'm in the train, I'm walking around, I'm most often listening. And I, this is actually something that I have been trying to do more of because uh, the past few months, I have to say, I haven't been listening to a lot of podcasts, which is something that's quite fucked up. You know, since I'm having the app on my phone, since I'm having some podcasts on my phone, I just need to listen to them. You know, I just need to plug my fucking earphones into my ear and then I'm good to go, basically. But I'm not quite often doing that, but I should really be doing that just because there is a lot of value. And, and when I'm walking... And this is the point that I'm willing to make. When I'm walking, there's nothing else that I actually could be doing unless just I'm looking at my phone and reading something. But that's very distractive. And it's probably not going to be the best thing to do in every certain situation of your life or in your life. But most often just listening to something is a pretty good option since you're able to just listen to something and therefore get the information and also keep attention to your environment and to just where you're going and all those things. So it's, first of all, pretty safe. It is efficient. You're learning something. It's just really amazing. And just because I believed into the whole podcast thing, I, I also think that those voice devices are going to be better in the future and are going to be more dominant and, and more used, especially in the future as well, because... I think at this point in time, especially with Siri and um, especially also when you're having those new AirPods and or AirPods in general, not a lot of people are going to use Siri to turn down the volume and or turn up the volume all the fucking time. I wouldn't use it, you know. If I had those AirPod, yeah, AirPod Pros, um, I wouldn't uh, be using it just because I do not really feel confident and I do not really feel good using that. I don't really feel good just being in my fucking train and being like, Siri, could you please turn down the music? Thank you. Or something like that. And this is definitely something that's culture and or society. And if society changes and if culture also changes, then of course, I guess we are also going to use those things since it actually is really efficient, since it is pretty convenient, to be honest. You know, it's, it's pretty cool. I'm most often using Siri to turn on my alarms when I'm not forgetting about it, of course. Then I, it's just really efficient and it is way faster for me to just rather than going onto my phone, going into my fucking alarms and then just turning them off manually. It is really a time-saving thing. And I think that it is also going to be very time-saving in the near future. I know, and therefore I'm also believing in them. In terms of the whole privacy thing, I, I never ever believed that privacy is such an issue just because we are still using credit cards. Just we are still doing a lot of other things. We're still having a phone around us. You know, and people can track the fucking G GPS and other things. And they can just look in your camera and, and see your notifications and whatnot. So privacy isn't such a big deal, at my point of view, at least. You know, for me, you know, and I'm <laughs> like, I kind of really believe that everyone's having my data, basically, because I'm having accounts online everywhere. Basically everywhere. Every game that you might be playing, I might have also just tried to play it. In the end, it was never ever possible just because I've always had just really bad computers and or computers that, uh, yeah, aren't made to be playing games on. But yeah, um, this is why I believe that voice is going to be pretty dominant and pretty useful as well in the future. And this might also be one of the reasons why you start a podcast, since it is going to be something for the future. Of course, there is a lot of competition. Of course, your podcast is not going to be, unless it is really good, is not going to just catch fire and just be good and, and whatnot in the in the first year. Maybe it is going to be the case for you. But for me, it has not been the case. You know, I've been doing this for a year and something. And I've, I've had successes, you know, tiny little successes over the past few years. I had them, you know. On every day I'm getting a new view. On every day I'm getting a new follower on, on some site. It feels good and it feels great. And it is a tiny little win. But I've just, I'm not, I'm not able to live off of that at this point in time, you know. But I guess, um, yeah, if I work on it, if I do the stuff, if I just get in the education, also the learning and whatnot then I guess chances are really not that low for me. It's actually pretty dark and I don't know why. But yeah, let's actually have a look at the ad that you can see on the left side of the screen. As I said before, it is about, or it is from the sendhabits.com site. I guess it is .com. I never ever know that. I always forget about that. And it is called The Way of Less by Leo Babauta or Babuta. I'm sorry. 
for the pronunciation mistakes and for the pronunciation of fucking whatever. So our lives naturally get filled with clutter. Progressions that we ordered online pour in week by week. We take on more and more and more and we are constantly reading and watching and responding. Messages pour in daily as well. The mono... Well, I've just really misread that. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to reread it because it's probably not going to be way better. But yeah. The modern world is one of more, more and still more. What would it be like to declutter our lives and live with less? Question mark. The way of less is one of less clutter, fewer possessions, just the essentials. So it's about minimalism basically as well. And it is something... I kind of feel like that minimalism is something that a lot of people are getting into. I don't know why actually... You know, I'm not a minimalist. This is not really something that I am. At least I wouldn't consider myself some minimalist. I also just, you know, if, if I'm just having a look at just at my room, it's not really tidied up. Like there's just a bunch of things, as you can see also in the background, laying around and whatnot. So I, I don't know. I just really wouldn't myself considering, or I wouldn't really consider myself a minimalist. But, you know, just comes up to the definition. No need to reach for the comfort of buying things or holding on to things because you have learned to take care of your stress without things. Less doing and busyness because you have said no to more things and have focused only on the things that make the most difference. Less distractedness because you're checking on the things less, more focused and less responsive. And the last one is less on your read list, less on your watch list or to watch list and or to read list and less that you have planned because you've let go of needing to read and watch and do everything that looks interesting. By reducing down to less, you learn to become content with little. You have space in, in your life. You can breathe. You can give focus to what matters most to you. You can find joy in the simple things. This is the way of less and many people I know have found it to be a joyful way of living. I often get off the path myself, but returning to it is always like coming home. And I would actually say so. I would actually say so that if you're actually having some sort of a way of living, I guess, then I think, like, it really is like a path. You know, of course, you're going to get off track sometimes. Of, of course, there's going to be some, some days where you're not going to be as good as on some other days, which is just the case with everything. Like, on some days, like today, this episode, I do not really feel that this episode is better than last day's episode. I kind of feel like that last day's episode is actually better than this episode. And I don't really know why. You know, there might not even be a reason for that, you know. I don't know. You know, it's just something that I kind of feel like. But yeah, just, you know, it's it's going to vary on the days. You know, maybe it's going to be always good on Monday and it's always going to be bad at just, or on, on Wednesday, could be the case, you know, and this is um, having something to do with self-awareness and knowing yourself and just also recognizing things and recognizing patterns. But yeah, the way of less is not really about saying no to everything or tossing everything out or doing nothing. Sometimes it involves those things, but that's not what's what it is all about. It is about saying yes to what really matters, paring down to the essentials that matter most to you and making space for those. What matters most? What are your essentials? My list might look something like this. The first thing is my mission, which is work, including writing and teaching. The second thing is my loved ones. The third, learning. And the fourth, an, act an active, healthy and mindful life. The last one might seem like a cheat, but it is flexible. It includes meditation, but could include walking, hikes, sports, lifting weights, yoga, cycling, swimming, surfing or even more. So what are your essentials? So please think about that. Maybe you're just also able to really come up relatively fast with your essentials, what you really need in your life. And yeah, you know, things that you couldn't really live without, I'd say. Possessions. You can also make a list of essential possessions. Mine might include a minimal amount of clothes for a week, a dozen books or so. I have more than that right now, but I'm paring down. Exercise equipment and yoga mat, my computer and phone, and of course things like dishes, towels, a bed, sheets, and those things that you just that you just need. Projects and doing. How much do you have on your plate? If you could whittle it down to the essentials, what would it look like? For me, it might look like my mission: one project at a time, cultivating the communities of my programs, including responding to messages once a day learning project and doing things with my loved ones. I'm not saying these are the only things I ever do, but they have become my projects and doing essentials lately. Digital essentials. 
So how do you do or how much do you do online? What do you read and watch? How often are you responding to messages or checking social media? If you had to prepare or pare it down to your essentials, what would it be? For me, it's email and the online communities for my programs, along with team and client messages. I also check a few news websites, but those aren't essential for me. I also have to, uh, I often have to, I also often do my learning projects using online reading. It is not about cutting everything out of your life, but about contemplating what your essentials are. Getting to the way of less. Once you have identified the essentials, getting to the way of less is the next part of the journey. We don't go into the details of it now, but uh, or right now, but here are some key points to this journey. Identify the essentials, which is the first point, which is, I think, just the thing that we just been doing. The second thing is start decluttering the rest one chunk at a time. You know, if you really know what your essentials are, then actually, yeah, throwing all the things out of your life that you really don't need makes sense, at least at my point of view. The third, learn to cope and thrive without the buying and overdoing. The fourth, find joy in the things that matter to you. The fifth, start saying no to the rest more often. And then enjoy the space. Enjoy the space that you're having. Enjoy the things that you're having. Enjoy the things that you're able to enjoy. You know, because we all have things that we enjoy. You know, just because I'm, I'm kind of thinking about it, I do think that that just always has to be some sort of escapism. Even though escapism, in my point of view, is just such a word that might not be that positive and might more like be a negative word, or a negatively connotated word. But um, I don't know, like we all, are, we all are having something like, yeah, that are escaping us. You know, for me, it might actually be the episodes. You know, for me, it might just be the work that I'm doing. For me, it might just be watching some YouTube videos and or listening to some podcasts when I'm on the go. Or it might also be being in school. I don't know, I know, but there's, there might be just drinking a glass of wine every day for you. It might be just drinking a beer every day for you, even though these two things are not really something that I would suggest you to do since it's, it's not healthy. But um, yeah, I know we all have certain things and or certain ways to cope with stressful days and or to just regenerate and those things but yeah but yeah um this is quite it with the article i haven't gone through the whole one so if you do want to check it out on your own as well the link is going to be down in the description so that you can read it on your own so that you can go through it on your own and see if there is something that's essential for you in here <laughs> oh my god and i don't know why my voice is fucked right now I, I i cannot really tell but it is what it is i do just want to have a look at the zen habit site or I'm just gonna, I think I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna end the episode there. Just because I do not want to stretch it. I do not want to give you more to listen to just as there is information and or value, those things. I wish you the best health of happiness and also success. And I also hope that you're going to remind yourself on you're going to be remembered, which basically means that you're just going to be a nice person. And then you're also going to be remembered as a nice person, potentially. Not really, since there are so many people on this planet and there's just going to be some people that hate you. It is what it is, like we are too many people so that the chance would actually be so low because it actually is pretty high, I guess. But yeah, um, three other questions that I hope that you're going to ask yourself are why are you here, what are you trying to change and what is bothering you the most? And those three questions are hopefully going to show you your purpose and maybe even a business idea since a lot of companies started out with solving what really pissed them off. And with that being said, I'll, I, I hope that you're actually going to subscribe to the podcast and also subscribe to the YouTube channel so that I'm going to see you the next time and so that you do not miss out on any good information or on any valuable things that I might be sharing on my journey to something. I don't know, but I'll see you the next time.